Alright, here's an example. We want to calculate the magnitude. Magnitude means length of the resultants. Alright, so when you have these, these little bars around your vector, which look like absolute value symbols, it's not absolute value symbols. This means length. So here's a vector v, and again, your book is going to draw it with this little vector symbol over the top, or it's going to be bolded. Okay? So that means that there's some vector v whose magnitude is 5. That's what those little bars mean. And there's some vector w whose magnitude or length is 9.5. Remember, vectors have length or magnitude and direction. We don't have any idea what the direction is, but we do know that the angle between the two of them is 120 degrees. And the way, or when it's specified like this, it always means from their initial points, which means tail to tail. So let's just draw these. And because I don't know where the actual bearing is, it doesn't matter how I draw them. So we'll just say that this one is V, and then we'll say that this one is W. We'll make it a little longer because it's 9.5. Okay. So it looks like that's, uh, I don't know, about 5. That's about 9.5. So this angle between them right here, that's theta. So this is the parallelogram method. And let's make another note up here, like a double note. Okay, so when you are given theta between their initial points, that means you're going to use the parallelogram parallelogram method. Parallelogram. So that means I'm going to construct, as best I can here, a parallelogram. Alright, so there's my parallelogram. And then let me draw my resultant. So there's the resultant right there. So what we want to do here is we want to find the length of the resultant. So this is going to be part A. Find the length of V plus W. Find the resultant of V plus W. Alright, so let's do some labeling here. So this is 5, which means this is 5, which means this is 9.5, and this is 9.5. Alright, so now this whole angle is theta, and I got two triangles here. They're the same triangles. Um, but I need an angle within uh, the triangle. And let me caution you right now, a lot of students think that this, um, that this resultant that I've drawn takes this 120 and bisects it. In other words, makes this, this side 60 and this side 60. That's absolutely not true. Don't make that mistake. A, uh, the resultant of a parallelogram is not an angle bisector. But you do know that in a parallelogram, you do know that adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees. So let's just put that over here. That theta plus gamma equals 180 degrees. All right, so I can figure out gamma. Gamma is going to be 180 minus 120. So gamma is going to be 60 degrees. So let me just draw, um, oh, by the way, before I go any further, if that one's gamma, this is also gamma. So now I can just draw, I'm going to draw this bottom triangle right here. And I'm just going to draw it without all the other stuff. Okay. And then I'm going to label what I know. So I know that this is 9.5, this is 5, and this is 60. I want to find the resultant, so I will call that C because it's opposite of um, gamma. So I could set up the box here, just so you can figure out what to use. We'll call this alpha. We'll call this beta. This, by the way, is very helpful for you to figure out which formula to use. So it looks like I'm going to use the law of cosines. I'm actually, ultimately, 
solving for C. So let's go ahead and use the formula for C squared. So C squared is going to be equal to 5 squared plus 9.5 squared minus 2 times 5 times 9.5 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And when you do all of that, don't forget to square root it, you get C is 8.2. So see how I use the law of cosines to figure that out? Alright, part B. Part B. Let me do some erasing up here. So part B, we want to figure out another angle for part B. B says find the angle, find the angle, and it's the angle between vector V and the resultant C. So we've labeled that C. Alright, so we want to find the angle between vector V. Well, here's vector V right here, and also down here, and the resultant. So I want to find this angle right here, which is the same as this angle down here. So I want to find, in this picture, I want to find angle V. So now I'm going to use the law of sine. So I can say that the sine of beta is to 9.5 as the sine of 60 degrees is to 8.231. So beta is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 9.5 times the sine of 60 sine of 9.5 times the sine of 60 over 8.23. And when you do that, you get 88.2 sine. 88.2 sine. Alright, so I'm going to write it in here and then I'm going to ask you kind of simultaneously how come I don't have to do 180 minus 88.27? Any idea why? I don't have to do that? Does that look like it's going to be an obtuse angle? No, it's not going to be an obtuse angle. Alright, so I don't have to do that in this particular case. So I do know that beta is 88.27. Alright, so that answers Here, and that's the end of the session.